Suicide is the second leading cause of death among teens and college students alike. SMTV will show how student counseling services and one student organization shed a huge spotlight on this. A Broadway classic makes its debut on campus. See firsthand the work involved to make guys and dolls a reality at the University of Southern Mississippi. USM football fell 42-14 to the Georgia State Panthers this past Saturday. To make up for that, USM basketball took down William Carey and took him to church with a 75-42 win in their season opener. Will the same happen to the Golden Eagles this Friday night as they play Vanderbilt? We'll find out more in the sports recap. News, weather, sports, and more begin right now on SMTV. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Good evening, USM. I'm Kier Malone. And I'm Colin Rogers. Thank you for tuning in to SMTV. This past Thursday, the Golden Eagles community grieved the loss of the legendary athlete and greatest punter of all time in NFL history, Ray Guy. Now we toss it to Charlie Luttrell, 4th Street sports reporter on the legacy of the late great punter. The punter position is usually an afterthought for football fans. After all, he only comes on the field a couple of times a game, or at least you hope so. You'll jeer when they shank a ball, but celebrate when they hang one inside the 20. Their work is undervalued, but a consistent and talented punter is a key part of the game of football. Well, the Raiders were so confident in this Southern Miss punter, Ray Guy, that they selected him in the first round of the 1973 draft with the 23rd pick overall. It was a gamble in the eyes of some, but Southern Miss fans knew how good Guy was, and one of the greatest minds in the history of the game knew that as well. I remember when we drafted him with the Oakland Raiders and we took Ray Guy number one. And everyone said, how can you draft a punter number one? And we said, because he's not only the best punter in the draft, he's the best punter that's ever punted a football. Guy's excellence at Southern Miss put him on the map in the NFL. He holds the longest punting average in school history of 44.7 yards per punt and had three career punts over 70 yards including a historic 93-yarder against Ole Miss in 1972. And Guy was a man of many talents. He holds the single-season school record for most interceptions and has a career total of 18 picks. He also made 25 field goals, including a 61-yarder that set a then-NCAA record. I mean, he could do everything. I mean, he was not only a punter, he would kick off. Uh, he, he, he was a great athlete. Guy gave football what it had never seen before. He helped coin the term hang time as he sailed punts into the air for as long as six seconds and infamously hit the scoreboard at the New Orleans Superdome. Of course, I think you probably well know, hit the overhead TV screens in the Pro Bowl of 76. They've now elevated that screen from 90 feet up to 200. Guy played every game in his 14-year career and appeared in three Super Bowls to become the winningest punter in NFL history. He holds many records with his 1,049 punts and it was recognized as he was inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame in 2014. They've been bumps, they've been curves, detours, and bridges to cross along this journey, but I have finally made it. For to be a part of this very special clubhouse called the Pro Football Hall of Fame and knowing it's forever, it's beyond my wildest dreams. Guy is the only punter to be inducted in the NFL Hall of Fame. And his legacy lives on at Southern Miss, where a street is named after him and where he returned to work as the director of the M Club and community relations and later joining the USM Alumni Association. Number 44 or number 8, whichever you know him as, had a lasting impact on the game and has cemented his fame in a position that is largely overlooked. He will always be remembered from his youth in Thompson, Georgia, to The Rock, and all the way to his days in Oakland, and then finally to Canton. This has been Charlie Luttrell for 4th Street Sports Show. Interview clips are courtesy of NFL Films and Fox Sport. Ray Guy would pass at the age of 73. Guy will be missed by friends and family, and he will forever be a Golden Eagle legend. 
For USM Theater, it's time to go back to the 50s. The USM production of Guys and Dolls is sure to give audiences nostalgia and laughter. SM2 reporter Nathan Lee gives us the inside scoop on what has been done to prepare for opening night tomorrow. <laughs> Come see Guys and Dolls. You'll laugh. You'll have a great time for any age. It's very fun. Music, hard work, and a bunch of talent are all on display in the Southern Miss School of Music's production of Guys and Dolls. These directors and performers show exactly what a musical can do to someone as they immerse the crowd back to the 1950s. This show also means a little bit more to this cast as this performance marks a historical feat for the Southern Miss School of Music program. Southern Miss hasn't been able to do a musical since 2018 due to COVID-19, meaning most of this cast hasn't been able to perform a musical since they have enrolled at the university. I was able to talk to cast member Nolan Lee about what it's like to get back on stage after such a long hiatus. This is just a feeling like no other. Literally for the dress rehearsal we had Sunday night when we had the orchestra, the costumes, finally feeling like we were putting it all together. I had this interesting feeling come across me. It was almost like a flashback to my childhood doing these musicals. It, I know I sound crazy saying that, but it was just an overall like sense of relief, excitement, happiness. I mean, I just hadn't had that feeling literally in like four years. From the incredible dancing skills to the dolls stealing the show and even a fight scene, this Guys and Dolls cast proves the extra hours it took to get to where they are now. Guys and Dolls director Mike Lapinto had this to say about the actors and actresses. The hardest working people on campus, easily. I mean, if you think that they are doing their regular classwork, which if anybody knows anything about sort of music world, it's, it's unending hours that they do. They're in choir, they're in band, they're in orchestra, they're in all sorts of other regular classes. Um, and general classes across campus, plus their music classes. And then they decide, hey, I'd write, really like to do a musical. So they're staying nights and weekends and adding to what they do. And I think when people see how strong they are at what they do, that it's just sort of amazing. And I think they're some of the most dedicated people to do this. And I think that sort of dedication shows through on the stage. They're as excited to be here because they've put a lot into it. Show dates are November 10th through the 12th at 7.30 p.m. You can find tickets at southernmisttickets.avenue.net. Nathan Lee, SM2 News. USM hosted its first fall repertory dance concert this past week. The dance was produced by senior choreography and dance majors. The concert was an opportunity for the dancers to showcase their dedicated hard work. So many different ways and tools to choreograph dances and work with other people and even teaching, um, even though I'm not a dance ed major, you still get to learn that and experience that, and they're just preparing you for the real world. In case you missed this concert, the second fall repertory dance concert will be held November 17th through the 19th. Contact Lauren Sotolo for more information. Student Counseling Services, in coordination with Active Minds, presented a powerful event this week, Send Silence Packing. The reason for the event was to bring awareness and destroy the stigma around staying silent about mental health issues. This event allowed students to immerse themselves into a very emotional setting with backpacks of people who have sadly committed suicide. The showcase is part of a display that the National Active Minds organization does across the country. This is a traveling immersive event promoting suicide awareness. The backpacks that you see here today represent um, students and others that died by suicide and as tragic and sad as that is we want to really promote the story that there's help to be had. If you have someone that needs help contact the Southern Miss Student Counseling Services via email or by calling 601-266-4829. Last Saturday Southern Miss hosted a tribute for U.S. veterans at halftime. At halftime, they walked out to music provided by the pride of Mississippi. From the Air Force to the Navy, members from all branches came out on a special day. The band showed their appreciation by playing songs and the Dixie Darlings wearing their colors of the American flag. Families and fans were joyous about the special occasion. As a reminder to all, Veterans Day is Friday, November 11th. 
Coming up next, we'll take a look at what we have in our Flash News Briefing and Sports Recap. But before then, let's hand it over to Brooke Parker for the weather. Thanks, SMTV. Here's that five-day forecast. I hope everyone's enjoying their cool evening. And as we head into the end of this week, we're going to see a couple more of those. So we're going to have warm days on Thursday and Friday, 78 and 79. And then a cool evenings, 58 and 51, with no real chance of precipitation, but a little bit cloudy, except on Friday. Friday is going to be wonderfully sunny. And then as we get into this weekend, um, Saturday and Sunday, we're going to have um, kind of warm days, but still a little cool, so 58 and 58. But we're going to have really cool um, mornings and evenings with a low of 33. Um, Saturday, you can look out for a small chance of precipitation, but Sunday will be a wonderfully sunny day, and that's your five-day forecast. For news, weather, sports, and more, follow Southern Miss Student Media on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Not again. Great. I'm going to be late. Call Lockout Locksmith. When every second counts, we are on the scene. You can count on us, your friendly neighborhood locksmith. We are available Monday through Saturday from 7 to 7. Call now. 601 854-6521 or visit us at lockoutlocksmith.service I just feel so good it as our students create, inspire, and inform. Beginning this fall, the School of Media and Communication will take its public relations master's degree fully online. That means students anywhere in Mississippi or around the world can get their advanced PR degree from the University of Southern Mississippi. Check us out as our students find new ways to create, inspire, and inform. of Hattiesburg that you need to know about. Here's your SMTV Flash News Briefing. On Tuesday, midterm elections were held. All congressional winners have been declared in Mississippi. There was no change in the parties of each congressional district of the state, and three of the four seats were filled in once again by the incumbents. In the first House district, Republican Trent Kelly kept his seat, winning with 74% of the vote against his opponent, Democrat Diane Black. In the second, Democrat Benny Thompson kept his seat as well, winning with 57% of the vote against his opponent, Republican Brian Flowers. In the third, Republican Michael Guest kept his seat, winning with 71% of the vote against his Democrat opponent, Shawaski Young. And in the fourth district, which is the district Hasbro resides in, Republican newcomer Mike Ezel won with 74% of the vote. He defeated Democrat and former Hasbro mayor, Johnny Dupree. On the national scale, the midterms are wrapping up and votes are almost done being counted across the country. Control of the Senate and the House could still go either way as both parties are currently neck to neck. Notably, Pennsylvania flipped blue this race as Democrat John Fetterman won against his Trump-backed Republican opponent Mehmet Oz. Georgia's Senate race is too close to call, so a runoff election will have to be held between Democrat incumbent Raphael Warnock and Republican Herschel Walker. The midterm elections are not quite over yet, and the results will determine which parties have control over the U.S. House and Senate. In Iran, protests are still raging against the death of Masa Amini, the young woman killed by the country's morality police for improperly wearing her hijab, and also against the new Iranian regime. Today, the Iranian army commander said that rioters will have no place in the Islamic Republic if country's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei 
orders a tougher crackdown on nationwide protests. Yesterday, the Iranian judiciary said courts would deal firmly with those who cause disruption or commit crimes against anti-government protests. Despite these warnings, protests across the nation continue as people demand justice and change in Iran. Welcome to the SMTV Sports Recap with Austin Lindsay. The Southern Miss and NFL community mourns the loss of one of the greatest punters of all time and Ray Guy this past week due to a battle with a lengthy illness. Going to the Rock, Golden Eagles football did not have a great outing on a rainy afternoon taking on the Panthers of Georgia State this past weekend. But first, let's take a look at the hardwood at the Reed Green Coliseum for the start of the basketball season for Golden Eagles hoops. Basketball season is underway as the Lady Eagles started off play in the Reed Green at 11 for Educational Day versus William Carey. The Lady Eagles got out to a rocky start, down by as many as 12 in the first half. But going into the half, they will be down by 5 at 35-30 to 30 to the Crusaders. In the end, Dominique Davis would come to save the day with an 18-point third quarter 18-point third quarter outing as she would help the Golden Eagles take control of the game for a 81-58 victory. Davis finished with a career high of 36 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 assists. Next up for the Southern Miss Golden Eagles, they take on Valpo on Saturday at noon. On the men's side of things, they also got out to a slow start as both teams would shoot 36% from the field at half with the Golden Eagles leading by just 5 at 27-22 at half. In the second half, though, USM would get things together, shooting 57% from the field, led behind transfer guard Austin Crowley as, and forward Denajay Harris, as Crowley would lead the team in points with 15 points and three rebounds on 7-12 shooting from the field. Next up for USM, Vanderbilt, as they take them on on Friday at 6 p.m. This past week, also in volleyball, they would take on the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana. In the first match, USM fell in four sets, three to one, but they bounced back in the second match, winning in a thrilling five sets behind 27 kills from Mia Wesley. The fourth street player of the week, Kenzie Smith, led the Golden Eagles with 96 assists, 24 digs, and eight kills in two matches against the Cajuns. Next up for USM at 17 and nine, they take on the Monarchs of Old Dominion for their final, for their final series of the Sun Belt. Heading in, before heading into the Sun Belt Tournament, which begins on November the 16th in Foley, Alabama. On to football. Taking it to the gridiron, USM football's team three-game winning streak would be snapped after the Panthers of Georgia State would dominate them in the rushing game. Let's take a look at what happened on a rainy afternoon at the Rock. Opening Saturday's game, fans pulled out the rain gear as there was a slight drizzle through the first half, making for a ground and pound matchup. Jumping in the game, the Panthers started out aggressive, going for it on four for short, but the nasty bus would have no parts of this, getting the stop early on. This fan agrees, letting loose, but his cough would stop him in his tracks. On the Panthers' next drive, they refused to be stopped as quarterback Darren Granger bounces off a tackle for a 17-yard rush. The play would then set up the first points of the game on a six-yard pass TD at seven zip. Little did the Golden Eagles fans know the Panthers of Georgia State were just getting started. A Panthers drive later, another touchdown at 14 zip in the first from 10 yards out. For the game, the squad dominated the trenches, rushing for a total of 388 yards. With GSU dominating the trenches, it was hard for USM to get anything going in the first half. As for this fan, it was too gut-wrenching to watch. Before the half, GSU would tack on two more scores to make it 28 nada. Uh, they ran the ball down our face, okay, and then they really stuffed us. I thought they dominated the line of scrimmage. And that's a new feeling for us. We, we've not had that happen to us this year. We played some really good football teams uh, where that – uh, you know, we, we, we usually win in the trenches. We did not win in the trenches today. Returning out the half, Coach Will Hall saw enough of his starter and backup to bring in veteran QB Trey Lowe. 
Halfway through the third, low, darts a pass to Cole Cavallo for the Golden Eagles to grab its first score at 28 to 7. Yeah, man, it meant a lot, you know. Um, it's been really, it's been hard for me, to be honest. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, just trying to stay the course. Uh, you know, my teammates have always been there for me. Everybody's been so positive, so, um, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was a good feeling, for sure. The Golden Eagles defense fed off this energy, forcing a fumble. Frank Gore Jr. would then seize the opportunity, revving up the crowd on a 38-yard rushing TD to make it 28-14, trying to change the tie. Quickly, Darren Granger would shut this down as he rips a 60-yard rush on the ensuing drive. A couple plays later, GSU would punch it in. The Panthers would tack on another score, closing it out at 42-14. Uh, Coach Elliott and Georgia State, I thought they played phenomenal. Uh, we thought all week that this was one of the better football teams and definitely the most physical team that we would play all year. We thought they were hot right now, and they just played extremely well. Credit to them. I thought they dominated us in all three phases. This has been all for the SMT Sport, SMTV Sports Recap. Thank you, Austin. Coming up, Abigail gives us the what's what on campus with the community calendar interview. After that, we'll see a preview of Abigail's conversation with the president of a historic USM organization. Don't go anywhere. For news, weather, sports, and more, follow Southern Miss Student Media on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Oh, man. I just feel so good.
benefit as our students create, inspire, and inform. Beginning this fall, the School of Media and Communication will take its public relations master's degree fully online. That means students anywhere in Mississippi or around the world can get their advanced PR degree from the University of Southern Mississippi. Check us out as our students find new ways to create, inspire, and inform. I'm Abigail Troth. Welcome to the Community Calendar. USN's Air Force ROTC Honor Guard will begin their 24-hour vigil on November 10th to November 11th at Veterans Memorial Park to honor all those who have died while serving in the armed forces. At 7 p.m. they will begin reading the 173 names of Hattiesburg natives that are listed on the pillars at the park. USM School of Music presents the beloved musical Guys and Dolls at the Manoni Performing Arts Center Auditorium. The musical begins November 10th at 7.30 p.m. and will run until November 12th. Tickets can be purchased at southernmisstickets.com. The Southern Miss Viola Festival will be hosted by the Southern Miss Viola Studio on Friday, November 11th at 8 a.m. Violists of all ages are invited to participate in the event. There will be lectures, performances, and master classes during the two-day event. The event will be held in Marsh Auditorium. USM School of Music will be hosting its annual audition day. They will welcome prospective music students to campus for tours, information, and auditions on November 14th at 9 a.m. The event will be held at Marsh Auditorium. USM's University Forum will be welcoming Princeton University Professor of Politics and Public Affairs Francis Lee. Lee will speak about congressional policy making in a fiercely competitive era. The event will take place at the Thad Cochran Center Ballrooms on November 15th at 6.30 p.m. Before we close out the show, let's see a snippet of the interview with the president of the Black Eyed Susans, Elizabeth Jones. So what is the role of the Black Eyed Susans here on Southern's campus? So Black Eyed Susans' role and duty is to just um, really empower women all over campus, but not just students, that's faculty. It's also not just women, it's just empowering everybody on campus. I know a lot of people might think, oh, you're just a women's org, so you just support women. No, we support everyone on campus because everyone has so much going on, so we might as well empower everyone to do the best they can every single day. Because, right. I mean, college is hard, so, you know, as long as there's an organization that has your back and has these fun events that are going on every now and then, that it's just really fun to take a break from, which I definitely think our meetings are essentially that, taking a break from all the craziness and just meeting, chilling with all our members and having a good time too. Absolutely. So do you have any goals that you've set for yourself as president? So one of my goals is one to bring in like an excellent group of women as our inductees. So we actually just announced all of our new Black Eyed Susans oh, and wow. they're actually selected by a secret committee that no one knows who they are. Literally, my advisor doesn't know. I don't know. I get an email that says Black Eyed Susans at Gmail. <laughs> oh, wow. And they just communicate with me and they say, hey, these are your new Susies, welcoming them in. And so um, what I have set for that is just really welcoming our new Susies in and being like, hey, like this is your role. Be excited about it. Um, it's a really great organization to be a part of. And a lot of people look up to everyone in this organization. I've definitely looked up to like Raven. Whenever I first joined um, my junior year, Raven was a part of it, and I always looked up to her. And so it was really nice to like get to know her and everything like that. Yeah. So it's nice to know that like people look up to people in that organization. And so I basically want them to be really proud of that and take that with them throughout their day and make sure they set a goal being a Susie. Absolutely. So what are some goals that you have then, really? Yeah, so my goals specifically are, one, to get people to know about Black Eyed Susans a little bit more. Um, some people think it, like it's a secret society. And yeah. it's like, the only thing secret about it is the people that pick everyone. Everything else, we're very open. We're very women-driven. Um, we want to make sure um, at our Women's Summit in the spring that we nominate three people to recognize them and showcase them. And that's just to show, hey, like we recognize you and we show you all the hard work that you do. And that's um, faculty here, and that's actually a sophomore student as well, just showcasing them and, and all their greatness and everything. Yeah, so what does the future look like for the Black Eyed Susan? So future for in the spring, we're going to have a few different events, like our Women's Summit. And essentially our Women's Summit is showcasing women in Hattiesburg, faculty and staff and they're going to come and speak to everyone that wants to be a part of that right. which is so much fun that's essentially what was put in place by Selma our past president um, a few years ago and ever since then the Women's Summit has been like our biggest event 
And so with that, we always want to make sure that is like the greatest event that we have because it's just empowering everyone that wants to be there and showcasing, because we ask women to come and speak there. Right. And so last year we had um, a law firm that's women owned come and speak to us. We had a few faculty staff. Um, we had um, a lady, oh no, this semester we're gonna have hopefully someone that is a um, private chef and come and speak with her private business. And so we're really, really excited about everything with that. Was that kind of the one? <laughs> <laughs> even my light, that was the right there. So, did you guys hear about the recent lottery? Yeah, I did, and I'm pretty jealous, not gonna lie. <laughs> 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 yeah, I really wish that I could have won that. You know what I could have done with that? I could have paid off these student loans. Oh, my. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I could have handled everything. Even Jonathan said we could have given some money to J Mac, as he said. <laughs> We, we really all could have used that. <laughs> yeah, I definitely could have. Given yeah. some to USM if they need it, you know, taking care of a lot of stuff with that. You know, how much was it again? Well, total, it was four, about $400 million after you gave back taxes. Oh, yeah. But it was $2.2 billion, so, mm -hmm. wow, that's a lot in Man, yourself, yeah. I could have done so much with that. <laughs> 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 but thank you so much for joining us on SMTV tonight. Be sure to subscribe to Southern Miss Student Media on YouTube and follow us on all social media. You will be sure to find a new episode of the show every Wednesday evening. Be sure to tune in next week for more great content. This has been Kira Malone, Abigail Trot, Colin Rogers, and Austin Lindsay. And as always, Southern Miss to, to the, the top. top. Good job, good job. Yeah. What are you yeah. doing? <laughs>